Hi everyone, welcome back to the fourth pre-recorded session for younger kids. If you haven't seen my face before, my name is Kylie, and today I'm going to be reading three books to you guys. So let's get started. So the first book we're going to read is called Think About Pink. Think About Pink by Quilin Croy. Maybe pink airplanes fly through cotton candy clouds. Do you guys think that? Clouds sometimes do look like cotton candy, right? The really fluffy ones. Look at this image. It shows a pink plane. Have you guys ever seen a pink plane before? Yeah, it's really pretty. Do you guys like the color pink? Mm, maybe you do, maybe you don't. But let's keep reading. Maybe pink boats float on lemonade lakes. Do you guys think that lakes could be made out of lemonade? If it was, would you drink out of it? <laughs> I might. <laughs> Let's look at this boat. Can you guys tell me what the name of this boat could be? There's a name right here. President Light. Maybe that's the name. What do you think? Hmm. Do you guys think that any of those things are possible? Maybe the clouds. Look at this animal right here. It's pink. Do you guys know what animal this is? Looks like a pig to me. Maybe pink cars honk in tutti fruity tones. Can you guys imagine what that could sound like? Why don't you try it for me? I want to hear how you guys think it would sound like. Maybe. Does this car look cute? Would you guys want this kind of car when you grow up? Maybe pink buses run on bubblegum gas. When you guys go to the gas station, do you guys think that bubble gum comes out of the gas tank? Maybe, maybe not. They could in our imagination. What do you think? Let's look at this animal right here. It's also pink with a little bit of purple. What animal do you guys think this is? Yeah, a type of lizard. Do you guys think the color is pretty? Have you guys ever seen a lizard like this? Maybe pink fire trucks squirt strawberry soda. Wow. If they did, would you line up to get some? Maybe you guys can write a story about one of these pink things. It would be really nice to read. Maybe pink bicycles roll over jelly bean bumps. Wow, can you imagine a bump that's a jelly bean? What flavor jelly bean do you guys like? Do you like the pink one, like the strawberry flavor one? I like the blue ones. What do you think? Maybe in Candyland, bicycles actually do roll over jelly bean bumps.
Let's look at the activities. Use a new color to draw your favorite animal. Why don't we do that together? So why don't you grab a piece of paper? I have this one. It's a piece of scratch paper. Let's draw our favorite animal in a different color. Let's see, what colors do you have? Why don't you go get some markers and come back? I'll wait for you. I'll go get mine. Are you guys back yet? Okay, so I have the color red. What color do you guys have? Okay, let's think. What is your favorite animal? Do you guys like dolphins or birds or fishes or teddy bears or cats or dogs? Any of those are good. Or pick one of your own. So I think I'm going to draw a cat. I'm not very good at drawing, but I'll try. So I have a piece of paper. First, I'm going to start with the circle. Okay, I do a circle. It doesn't look too good, but it's okay. Next, I'm going to draw ears. What animal are you drawing? What's your steps? Maybe you guys can draw while I draw. Or maybe you guys can follow along with what I'm drawing. So I think I'm just going to draw two triangles for ears. Like that. Does it look like a cat so far? I'm sorry I'm not too good at drawing. Maybe smaller triangles inside also. Now, how about the eyes? Let's draw two circles. Okay, have you guys done that? Are you drawing your own animal? Either one's fine. Mm, what else do cats have? They have a nose, so let's draw that. Here's my nose. It's like a smaller circle. And most importantly, cats have whiskers. So I'm just going to draw three lines on each side. Like that. Now I'm going to do it on the other side, too. Like that. OK, that's my cat. Uh, maybe I might try to fill this in to make fill the ears in to make it look a little nicer. I'm not sure if that will, though. Okay, here's my cat. Do you guys like it? Can you guys show me your drawings? I want to see what you guys do too. Okay, nice. Okay, let's put away our materials or just put them to the side. Maybe another activity will come up. We'll see. Create a funny name for the color pink. What kind of funny name do you guys think of? Well, what things are pink? Bubble gum, jelly beans, like strawberries, I guess. How about we call it Bubble gum, bubble gum red. I don't know. I just came up with that. That's our new funny name. Do you guys have any other ideas? Yeah, <laughs> that sounds fun. Okay, let's move on to our next book. Left, right, left. Our safe walk. So before we start reading, can you guys tell me if you guys have ever been on a walk 
maybe with your friends or with your family members? Well, it's, it's fun to go on a walk and it's also good to exercise, but we need to make sure we're safe when we're walking, right? So let's read this book. Left, Right, Left, Our Safe Walk by Risa Mai and photographs by Wes Fothergill. Let's walk to the library. There are lots of streets to cross, but we know how to get there safely. Before reading this book, can you guys tell me some ways that we can stay safe while walking? Let's list one or two. The first one would be walk on the sidewalk, right? You don't want to be walking in the middle of the road. Second thing, maybe look out for cars. And the third thing, make sure that when you're walking, the walk sign is on so that no cars will, you know, drive past you. <laughs> So let's look at this image here. Can you guys tell me what the road name is? Do you guys know where to find the road names? Yeah, it's right here. Right on the traffic light. It seems like this road is named Cleveland. At our first crossing, the signal changes after someone pushes the button. Have you guys ever seen these buttons? Yeah? So you push them when you want to cross the street. We wait until the walk light comes on. We look left, right, left to make sure cars are stopped. Then we cross the street with our heads up and our eyes open. That's good. So make sure that when you press the button, you don't just walk straight away. You need to make sure that the walk sign is on. And before you walk, you have to look left, right, and left just to make sure that there are no cars. And then you can cross the street, make sure you're aware of your surroundings, and you'll be safe. The next crossing is a four-way stop with stop signs facing each road. See this sign? That's a stop sign. Drivers may be coming from all directions. We wait for cars to come to a complete stop. Looking left, right, left, we carefully cross the street. So do you guys know what a four-way stop is? So instead of just a road going like this, they're like this. So cars can come here and here. So we gotta be extra careful when crossing. And remember, what should you do before crossing? That's right, you have to look left, right, and left again. Tracks are for trains only. We know a railroad crossing is coming up when we see the yellow and black signs. So where's the yellow and black signs in this picture? Yeah, it's right here. This is a sign for railroad. And yes, only trains are supposed to go on railroads. We cross tracks at the marked crossings after we have checked left, after we have checked, looking left, right, left to make sure there is not a train coming. Never run or play on train tracks. Tracks are for trains only. Yeah, so sometimes when you need to get somewhere, the only way you can get there is by crossing a train track. But it's okay to cross them as long as you're safe and 
you walk on the marked on the marked crossings. As you can see, these children here are crossing. We can see there's like a flat road here. Yeah, it makes it easier for you to cross. And make sure whenever you're crossing the train track, you make sure there are no trains coming. Similar to like cars. Some streets have a crossing light that is controlled by traffic, not a button. We wait for the walk light and then we look left, right, left before crossing the street. So sometimes when you want to cross the street, there's no button to press, but there are these horizontal lines that you see on the road. That means it's a crossing. And you can also see the crossing light. But sometimes you don't see a button. That's OK. You can still cross only when this walk light is on. And again, what should you do? That's right. Make sure you look left, right, and left again. Sometimes there is no traffic light or signs to help us cross the street. Oh no, what should we do? Hmm. Let's think about it. What should we do? Okay, let's see. When we do not have a traffic light or sign, we always cross at the corner, not the middle of the street or from between parked cars. We look left, right, left. When no cars are coming, we cross the street. We look and listen as we cross. So can you guys tell me why we might look and listen? So what are we looking out for? Yeah, that's right. We're looking out to make sure there's no incoming cart. And how about listening? What are we listening for? Yeah, we're listening to make sure there's no sound of cars coming. So make sure that you look left, right, and left again, and that you cross at the corners, not in the middle of the road, but at the corners. We made it safely to the library. That was a fun walk. Now let's read some books. Yay, you guys have made it to the library. Take a walk to read the sign on streets near your home. So when you go outside, what kinds of signs do you think you might be able to see? Yeah, the street signs. It's good to know what street you live on and also the names of streets around you. There could also be bus signs or stop signs, or maybe flyers posted around your neighborhood. Talk about ways to stay safe when traveling. So maybe like for right now, as you guys are kids, make sure that you're always with an adult when you are traveling around. And always make sure you stay aware of your surroundings So can you guys tell me once again what you guys should do before crossing? That's right. Make sure you look left, right, and left again. Let's move on to our last book. So this book is called Community Matters. So let's look at this cover image. What do we see? There's a lot of people and it looks like they're all dressed differently. And these outfits probably mean they all have different jobs. Like we can see maybe a pilot 
someone who just graduated, a student, a kid like you guys. We can see a businessman, a businesswoman, a construction worker, a nurse, and a doctor. These are all people in our community. Community Matters by Holly Hartman. Community is more than where you live. It is also the people who live there, your family, your friends, and neighbors. So your community isn't just the physical location, like your house and the houses around you, but the people in those places also make it up. Do you guys have family, friends, or neighbors around you? Do you know some of their names? Do you talk to them sometimes or say good morning? Yeah, those are all people in your community. Community is where families grow and play together. So we can see here, there's a kid riding, learning how to ride his bike in the park. This park is part of your community. Have you guys learned how to ride your bike yet? Community is where friends learn together. So where do we learn? That's right, we go to school. All the people who go to your school probably live around the same area. And that area is called your community. So your classmates, your friends, they're all part of your community. Community is where neighbors know each other. So do you guys know any of your neighbors? Maybe the person who lives next door, the person who lives across the street. Yeah, why don't you guys say hi to each other the next time you see them? It would really make them happy. Community is where people work together to make things better for everyone. So let's look at this image. What are these people doing? Yeah, they're picking up trash. As you can see, they're working together to make sure their neighborhood is nice and clean. Communities work together so that the environment is better, people are happier. Community is where family and friends talk together to make plans and solve problems. So does your community have board meetings or maybe surveillance? meetings. My community does. Maybe your parents go to them. Or maybe you guys have a community event. I know that my community used to have block parties. Yeah, communities are a great place to get to know one, of a, one another. And if there is a problem in your community, you should reach out to everyone to make sure that they are solved. Community is where neighbors share good and bad times. So as you can see in this image, this lady is holding an American flag. It might be the 4th of July. It seems like this community is celebrating together. Does your community celebrate any events together? And sometimes bad things happen, but communities are there to support one another. And that's why we should make friends with everybody. Community is where people take care of each other. So we can see two girls here 
and it seems like they are hanging out together. Have you ever seen perhaps an older neighbor taking care of someone who's younger? Yeah, we do these things because we are a community, because we help each other. Community is where you belong. Community matters. So you are part of your community, right? So make sure that you have a nice friendship with everyone around you. And it's the place where you can come back to, maybe when you're older and the people there, you guys can make memories. See the shop, it says for 79 years. So maybe the people in this community have lived together for 79 years and have all come to the shop. Get to know someone new in your community. Perhaps someone new has moved in. It would be really nice if you could introduce yourself and make them feel welcome. Because wouldn't you like that too if you visit or if you move to a new place and people were friendly towards you? It would make them feel at home. Plan for the whole family to help out at a community event. So maybe you guys can go help out at a food bank or maybe to pick up trash. These are all things you can do to help your community. Are you guys close with your community, the people around you? It's okay if you're not, but just try to be nice to everyone. Okay. Those are all the books I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed reading with me. Um, remember that we do have live sessions on Saturdays, so come join if you want to see us and read with us. But otherwise, I hope you guys had a really nice day. I hope you guys enjoyed reading with me because I enjoyed reading with you guys. I will see you next week. Bye.